So we're here to talk about contextual interference today. Um, so when we practice a particular skill, um, there's a couple of ways that we can go about it. We can adopt a, uh, a uh, blocked practice um, schedule, which is where we um, focus all of our practice around one particular skill and, and, and focus exclusively on that. An example might be when we're studying maths at high school, we might read a chapter in a textbook on multiplication. And at the end of that chapter, we might uh, undertake a quiz uh, where we solve a whole bunch of multiplication problems. Um, alternatively, we can adopt a random schedule practice, uh, sorry, random practice schedule, which is um, where we mix it up a bit more. We might conduct a multiplication problem. We might uh, undertake a, an addition problem, a, subtract, a subtraction one, etc., and just mix it up a bit more. Now, there's a marked advantage in undertaking a random practice schedule over um, the blocked example, uh, and we refer, we refer to the advantage that you get as, um, as contextual interference. Yep. Now, that didn't really provide a really good um, definition of contextual interference. So, Kel, I'm wondering if you can elaborate on that at all. Yeah, sure, Nev. So, contextual interference is the interference or distraction that comes from using a random practice schedule, as you were just talking about. Yeah. Um, and while this makes practice more difficult initially, uh, the result is often superior learning, retention, discrimination between stimuli, and transfer of skills to the real world afterwards. So, in block practice, the level of contextual interference is quite low, as each repeated trial is the same as the previous one, which interferes less with the current or upcoming trials. In random practice schedules, because different kinds of trials are being used, the contextual interference is much higher, which means each time a new trial starts, it is likely different from the previous one. So, higher contextual interference has been shown to enhance learning and retention uh, for a variety of tasks, including learning musical instrument techniques, uh, practicing sport techniques, different sport techniques and skills, and increasing maximal be bench press strength. That was a very useful explanation of um, contextual interference, but I'm wondering if you could explain how it works. Yep, okay, so there's three main mechanisms uh, which are hypothesized to be driving it, and these are all related to increasing the beneficial cognitive load which is related to the task. So the first one comes from being able to compare and contrast the different stimuli um, as you're practicing them within the same session, and this leads to more distinctive conceptual uh, processing. The next one is about the new tasks coming in and distracting you from the previous ones, and this, is, this forces you to actively recall the first task from memory, and this solidifies its place there. And the final one they talk about is due to increasing the initial difficulty, which we spoke about earlier, uh, there's actually more errors forced upon you, uh, but that also gives you the opportunity for corrective feedback and enhanced learning that way as well. So Kel, those theories were really interesting, um, but I'm wondering how can I actually apply those theories in real life? Okay, so to make use of it, starting out you probably do want to use a little bit of block practice to help you build some sort of familiarity with the skills that you're going to be practicing, um, but you really don't want to rely on this because it can really lead to increased rigid and inflexible learning patterns. So once some of these basic skills have been learnt, you do want to systematically increase the amount of contextual interference um, as the skill is being developed further. And you want to vary this depending on skill level. So this should be done more slowly for children or complete novices, as they take longer to learn to discriminate between stimuli and skills um, than the adults do or advanced learners do. And you also want to be aware that adding too much of this too soon could also be really counterproductive. So to get around this, you really want to include a variety of skills within each practice session, and the more dissimilar, pretty much the better. Um, so this might mean practicing under a variety of conditions which may be demanded in the future, um, and this really helps build a more developed cognitive schema of how the task or skill is performed in the real world. Um, some basic examples of this might be you know, practicing and learning how to catch a ball in wet weather or windy conditions as well. Okay, no worries. Thank you very much for that. That was uh, really insightful. Cool. All right.